Hi everyone and welcome to another video. In today's video we're going to talk about HashiCorp's Vault and why it's used, why it's important and we're going to talk about secrets management. We'll also uh, walk through a use case uh, in our demo today. So let's get started. All right so let's let me move myself here to the top of the screen so we can go through this presentation. Okay, so the use case for today, we're gonna to talk about dynamic secrets uh, for databases, and specifically, we're gonna focus on MongoDB. All right, the agenda for today, we're gonna to talk about uh, Vault, to give you an introduction, what's Vault, what does it do, what are the use cases, what problems does it solve? Uh, we'll talk about dynamic secrets in particular, uh, that will be our main use case for today, we'll give a demo on that, uh, and then we'll talk about uh, you know next steps in QA. So introduction to Vault and what it really does, it solves a secrets management problem. Uh, so what is a secret, right? That's the first question I would ask. Uh, well, a secret really is anything that allows you to authenticate into a system or authorize you to do something on that system, right? Uh, examples of secrets are usernames and passwords, uh, database credentials, uh, API tokens, and uh, TLS certificates. So how do you manage secrets? Uh, the challenge is really, you know, wh who has access to these secrets? And if they did have access, what did they do with them? How are they being used? Uh, so you need an audit trail. Also, uh, can you periodically rotate these secrets? Meaning that, you know, can you expire those secrets and, and create new ones? Uh, in case of a breach somewhere, you want to make sure that, you know, moving forward, nobody has access to those secrets and you generate new ones. So ch challenge number one really is uh, secret sprawl. So these secrets can exist in many different places and uh, typically folks uh, or developers will would hard code secrets into source code as plain text sometimes. Uh, that makes its way from development to all the way to production. Uh, sometimes they're configured or set in configuration management tools such as Chef, Puppet, Ansible, and so on. And they're also in plain text and they make their way to uh, production as well. Uh, ultimately, these secrets get stored in a version control system such as GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, uh, and whoever acts, has access to that version control system will be able to see those secrets. So again, the questions are who has access to those, what have they done with those secrets, um, you need an audit trail, and then how do you rotate those secrets, right? So that's the first challenge, and the first solution that uh, Vault came up with, and that's really how Vault started, was to centralize everything. So if you can centralize uh, all these secrets, then what you can do is you can encrypt them at rest uh, or in transit or both. And um, the in transit, when we talk about in transit, really it's the communication between Vault as a server and the clients of Vault. Uh, so you need to encrypt them. You also want to have some uh, granular uh, access control lists to know, you know what, what exactly you're going to access. And then also an audit trail. So that's the first solution with centralization with Vault, and Vault was built to uh, to solve that problem of of uh, secret sprawl. And now, the second challenge is that many applications uh, are not very good at keeping secrets. They do a terrible job at it, in fact. Uh, so sometimes you'll find secrets show up in that standard output. Um, may that standard output may actually ship over to Splunk, for example, or any logging tool for that matter. Uh, also, from a diagnostics perspective, uh, you might leak some of those secrets in a traceback exception or an error report. Uh, also, if you have a monitoring tool, you're sending uh, some of those logs, some of those uh, information, some of that information is being monitored using a monitoring tool. Some of those secrets might leak that way. So, Vault solved that uh, problem using dynamic secrets. And what dynamic secrets are, they're basically uh, generated only when you read uh, those secrets, uh, meaning that they don't exist beforehand. They only get generated when you, they get read, so they're not static. They're also ephemeral and they're short-lived. You can define how long uh, they live for. So it could be 30 days, it could be 10 seconds. We'll see in our demo, we, we specify 10 seconds. Uh, and then they get auto-generated after 10 seconds. So you can get a new secret. They're also unique to each client. So if you have 50 web clients and they're all talking to one backend database and uh, 
you know each credential is unique to each web client. Uh, that's important. For example, if there's a breach, you want to know, well, where did the breach happen? On which web client did that breach happen? Uh, also, we have a very good revocation story. And uh, what I mean by, by that, let's say out of those 50 web servers, a web server number 17 happens to, you know, leak that secret or it gets compromised or something and you need to take action you want to rotate that secret well you don't have to i mean you're only going to focus on web 17 uh, whereas if you had static secrets then and that secret is the same across all 50 web servers uh, now you're going to incur an outage when you want to rotate that secret across all 50 servers whereas with one server it's just that one server that's going to get that quick hit all right, challenge number three is with cryptography, and cryptography is difficult. So what happens is many times app owners, they want to uh, uh, encrypt their data, the, the, data, the app's own data at rest. Uh, so what they would do uh, is that they would store encryption keys in Vault and use those encryption keys in their own implementation of cryptography. Uh, Vault itself is, is a store for managing secrets. So it's not meant to be used to store confidential information or data from the app itself. Uh, however, when, when developers store these keys in, uh, in Vault and use them to encrypt the data, uh, they can get the encryption, encryption or the cryptography wrong. And if that happens, that can lead to compromises. Because there's a lot of nuances when it comes to implementing cryptography and you need to get them all correctly. Uh, so the solution that Vault came out with and said, well, well what, what can we do here? We can actually offer um, encryption, encryption as a service for folks. Uh, let me move myself a little bit to the side here so you can see. So the third solution is encryption as a service, right? Now, what the developer needs to create is a named key. Uh, so something like a CC here or credit card or social insurance number, social security number or PII. Just give a uh, the the key a name uh, that key will not be shared outside of vault so nobody will see the content of that key it's just the name of the key uh, and then all you need to do as a developer you access high level APIs uh, for cryptography so you can do something like encrypt sign verify uh, send an as an example an HMAC with the name of the key and then um, vault takes care of the cryptography for you uh, the other the neat thing is that you offload key management over to Vault. And if uh, if cryptography is hard enough, key management is a nightmare because uh, you need to you know manage the key versioning, the key rotation, the decommissioning of these keys, and so on. So the key life cycle really is difficult, and moving it over or offloading it to Vault uh, really helps. All right, cool. Now. As a summary, so the key challenges and th three solutions that Vault offers, as we talked about, you know, secret sprawl uh, and centralizing that into a server, with how, that's how Vault started. Uh, the second challenge was the applications are terrible at keeping secrets, and we solved that with dynamic secrets that are ephemeral, and you can rotate them easily. Uh, and then the difficulty around cryptography and solving that uh, by offering encryption as a service uh, with Vault. Okay, cool. So as I promised, we're going to look at the use case, specifically the database dynamic secrets, um, and we'll take a quick look at this application that I put together for us uh, for this demo. And what you see here is we have a an application. All it is, it's a web uh, blog, basically, and it's using Flask. Uh, so that's the front end, and then you get the database in the back, uh, it's a Mongo database. And traditionally, what what people would do is that they would either hard code the database credentials straight into the source code, not really advisable, or you can create an environment uh, config file and attach that, uh, or the, the application would read from the environment configuration file, use that to access the database. <clears throat> uh, but with Vault, and we'll demonstrate that today, is that you can create those dynamic database credentials they get created automatically, and um, there's a timeout associated with them. We're going to use 10 seconds just to make it, things go faster. And then you can access the, uh, the database via the Vault API. So as you can see here, number one, we request credentials from Vault. 
uh, Vault creates those credentials and persists them in MongoDB. And then Vault responds back to our application, sending those dynamic credentials. Uh, and then the application uses those credentials to talk directly to the database. And then the communication goes back and forth until the credentials expire, and in our case, in 10 seconds. And what happens, the application goes back, requests new credentials from Vault, and rinse and repeat. Now, and for this exercise, I have Vault running as a one instance uh, that's configured to use console as the backend storage. There are multiple different variations of what you can use for a backend for Vault. Uh, console offers high availability. Uh, in our case, we're only using one instance of console. In a production cluster, what you do is you typically at least have three Vault instances and three console instances. And then through a series of elections and using, using gossip protocol, you know which one of the Vault instances you're talking to and the other guys are in standby. And if one fails, you know, then you switch leadership to, to a second one and so on. Typical HA scenario. But for demonstration purposes, we're just going to use one instance of, instance of Vault and one instance uh, of console. All right, so what, we, what we're going to do is we're going to first run the application as if we don't have Vault at all. So we're going to rely on environment variables in that end file. I'm, I'm going to show you in a minute. These are hard-coded MongoDB username and password, uh, and they're static. They don't expire. And, and then after that, we're going to move over to using the same application. In this case, we're going to rely on uh, Vault to provide dynamic secrets for us. Again, we're going to get a username and password that are autom automatically generated by Vault and passed to the application using the API. And then the username and password expire every 10 seconds, and then they get renewed. All right, so let's exit out of here and bring up our uh, Visual Studio window. <clears throat> OK. So this is our application. I'm using Visual Studio here. Again, it's a Flask application for a web blog. And uh, you can see all the files on the left-hand side. But really, the main file that we're gonna, the main two files we're gonna access are the environment variable file, uh, configuration file, and the database.py, uh, this Python file. So the first thing I want to do, um, I was demonstrating this earlier, so I'm gonna uncomment the database user and database password environment variables. Uh, let's save that, and then in the database uh, Python file, I will read the user and password from the environment uh, file. Um, and then let me comment this because we're going to use this for the vault scenario. And yeah, let's comment this as well. Um, so now what will happen is, as you can see, I'm going to restart the application. It's going to get restarted. It's reloading. Um, and then once it starts, we're going to see that, that we're getting the uh, I'm actually sending out the, the username and password um, as a standard output just to demonstrate this. So let's go over to our Chromium window and let's go to our application. We we'll call it fancy, fancy blog. Uh, let's log out. And I'm going to log in. All right, <clears throat> so I can see I've logged in successfully. I can look at my blogs. And now in the background, let's pivot over to our configuration here. As you can see, the server has started uh, and it's talking to MongoDB on localhost and port 27017, the default port for MongoDB. Uh, the user is Sam, password is test123. This is coming out on the terminal output. I'm on the terminal output right here. And you can see it's the same username and password that I'm using from the environment variable. And uh, you can see I'm doing get posts and so on, looking at the blogs. Uh, I can continue to look at one of the blogs and see the different posts that I have here and so on. Go back to blogs. Uh, no interruption at all in the application. Everything is, is running fine. Uh, I can finally log out. Uh, but then if I go back here, uh, you see everything's static. We only saw the user and password once here. 
and we're going through a series of gets and posts and so on. Now what I'm going to do is use vault now for dynamic secrets. So the problem with this, as I mentioned earlier, is that this is hard coded. This will live somewhere on in GitHub or any of your version control systems. Uh, and it will be accessible by anybody who has access to that version, version control system. So to add security to the mix using vault, now I'm, un I'm commenting out the username and password that we use for accessing the credentials from the environment variable file. And now I'm going to talk to the uh, API, the Vault API straight from, uh, from my application. Um, now I save this and it's gonna go ahead, reload the application. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back here, I'm gonna sign in. There you go, I'm signed in again. Let's go to the blogs. I can see my blog, so I'm accessing the database once again. Now if we go back and look at our terminal window, you can see here, uh, same server, same port, but now your user is um, auto-generated username from Vault, and the password is also an auto-generated password from Vault. Uh, remember, we configured only 10 seconds, and I'll show you where we configure that. Uh, for, for these keys to be rotated and so on. So if I go in and continue to access my database from the application here and click around, then go back, you can see that uh, we get a, a message that I put out in standard output saying Mongo database authentication failed due to creds expiring, rotating credentials now. Uh, and then you get the same information, but now we have a different User, this was the old username, this is the new username, this is the old password, here's a new password, uh, and so on. I can do this again, I can start clicking around, it's been 10 seconds already. Uh, and if we go back here, you see that we will have another, you can see another message, authentication failed, rotating credentials, and you can see the new username and new password. And as you can see, the application experiences nothing, nothing is broken, the user uh, has a seamless experience through it all, um, but you are securing this application. And if, if this gets compromised, this is only one instance of a web uh, front end, but if this gets compromised, that key will only live for 10 seconds and it will, it will disappear, right? So that's the beauty of dynamic secrets. Now, in addition to this, I just wanna show you quickly on the uh, terminal side of Mongo, so if I open my Mongo terminal here, uh, and I'm gonna write show users. And the only user I see here is admin Sam. That's the administrator for MongoDB. Uh, now, when I start interacting with the application, you're gonna see a new user gets generated. So if I go ahead and show users, there you go, here's a new user. Here's the user name that just got created. Of course, the password won't show up here, um, but it automatically, Vault automatically injects the credentials into MongoDB's users. And if I wait 10 seconds, which probably has been 10 seconds now, run the show users command again, and it vanishes, right? It disappeared uh, because the application really doesn't need these secrets. I haven't been interacting with it. So that's how the uh, how that's how Vault communicates with MongoDB. Now, of course, you could use a different uh, database other than Mongo. There are plugins into uh, MySQL, Postgres, and other databases as well that you can use with Vault. But that kind of gives you an idea of how uh, you can use dynamic secrets. All right, so I'm gonna show you really quickly how this was all configured. Uh, so if I go into my GitHub repo for this demo. Uh, how this was all set up. Uh, in this case, you can see uh, the web blog that I have here is using Python, Flask, um, MongoDB console and vault. Uh, to set up MongoDB, this is what you need to do to create a user. You also wanna make sure you start MongoDB uh, with authentication enabled. If you start MongoDB, uh, the default way of doing it, it does not enable authentication, so you need this auth flag. 
then you start a new terminal just to be able to interact with Mongo to do the show users that I talked about earlier. Uh, for console, for the backend for Vault, uh, you just need to run this command after installing console, of course, and make sure you bind it, make sure you run it in server mode and bootstrap, and you can also run the UI. Um, so here's what the UI of console looks like. You can see that Vault is registered as a service. Uh, you can continue to go and see that Vault is unsealed um, and so on. Uh, then you can also, from here, you create a uh, configuration file for Vault. This is how you're setting up Vault for HA. Uh, in the configuration file here, you specify that console is being used for the backend. Uh, the listener is on this particular uh, port on localhost. Uh, disable mlock is true. This is for using swap or not. In this case, I'm, I'm saying, okay, I'm disabling this so you can use swap, uh, especially if you're running on Linux. I'm running this on Ubuntu. Uh, you, then you would need to do that. Uh, then you initialize vault uh, this way. Uh, you run vault operator in it, uh, and then this will get generated for you automatically. And what this is, this is five unsealed keys. So to be able to work with Vault, you need to have Vault be unsealed, right? If you seal Vault, nothing can speak to it. It's completely locked down. In case of an emergency, you wanna lock it down um, and, and investigate if something happens. But to normally work with it, you have it unsealed in this case, and we have five keys that you can use to unseal. Um, in this case, by default, the threshold is three, meaning that you need three out of the five keys to unseal Vault. Uh, now, this is definitely, definitely not to be done in production, what I'm doing right here, showing you all five keys in one place. Uh, what you do in production is you would uh, work with uh, Keybase, for example, and you'd specify five users in your organization, and each user will uh, get an encrypted version of this key that they can decrypt, uh, but they have each one has their own key, so they're not together at all. Nobody knows anybody else's key, and they need all th three keys to be able to unseal uh, vault and start using it. Uh, here's a link to how to do that, vault PG, PGP and keybase.io. Once you have that, now you can go ahead and unseal um, the vault and you use vault operator unseal and then you run this command three times every time, specify or give the, the key that we showed earlier. Then you need to log into to vault and authenticate with the, with the root token that you got earlier. Then you enable database secrets engine. This is where we're going to uh, enable the configuration to MongoDB. Uh, here you configure Vault with the MongoDB plugin. So you specify the user and uh, password to access uh, MongoDB. Uh, and then here is where you configure the role. And this is really to map uh, a role in Vault to MongoDB command. Uh, so you can see here the, the statement that's being run, a database in admin. Uh, the role is that read, write any database. Uh, you can actually get granular and say, I only want to read database name foo, for example. And here's the default uh, time to live. It's 10 seconds that we talked about earlier. You can configure the secrets for, you know, one, one hour, 30 days, whatever you, you like. And in our example, we're doing 10 seconds just to move things faster for the demo purposes. Uh, you can manually test. Uh, getting those secrets automatically by running this command uh, from the command line, Vault's command line. And then you can use the Vault API the same way we've used it in the application. You can use curl here to see how you can access the API. You need a token to talk to it. I'm using the root code token in this case. You probably want to create your own token that's not root uh, and create some policies and rules inside of Vault. Uh, this is out of the scope of this video, but you can totally do that. You get a sample response, the username and the password in the form of a JSON blob. And here's the Python example that we use in our demo uh, to talk to the API, the Vault API. And uh, that's it. That pretty much sums it up for how to access this um, or how to use dynamic secrets with Vault within your application. And uh, hopefully, this, uh, hopefully this video has been helpful for you. Uh, if you find it useful, please uh, give us a thumbs up, give us uh, some comments in the comments section and let us know uh, if you have any questions. Thank you for watching.